तव कथात तप्त जीवन कविरीडित कलमशापम श्रवण मंगल श्रीमदात भुवि गृणंती ते भूरीदा जना टुडे इज द होली डे ऑफ द जन्मतिथि ऑफ स्वामी अद्वैतानंद जी ए डायरेक्ट डिसाइपल ऑफ भगवान श्री राम कृष्ण अमंग दिक्सटीन डायरेक्ट डिसाइपल ऑफ श्री राम कृष्ण स्वामी अद्वैतानंद जी was the senior most in age in connection with swami advaitanand ji is coming to sri ram krishna at the age of uh, 48 years 47 years one is reminded of bhagavad gita in bhagavad gita bhagavan sri ram krishna says mahmi parthav vyapashritya ये स्ु पापयो नय स्त्रि वैश्यास्तूद्र ते पी परांगति श्री कृष्ण मेन्शन थ्री पीपल हु हेव गॉट लॉट ऑफ आब्स्टिकल फॉर द स्पिरीचुअल लाइफ स्त्रिय वैश्या तथा शूद्र इन दोज टाइम्स लेडीज डी नॉट हेव एनी ऑपर्चुनिटी फॉर स्पिरीचुअल डेवलपमेंट their duties were so much from early morning to late night they would find no time for spiritual practices similarly vaishyas the tradesmen who were engaged in business they also could not find time similarly shudra the laborers they did also there is no fixed time for their duties from morning till night they were working hard All these three people have got obstacles in their spiritual life. Papa, Papa is sin. Sin is that that obstructs our spiritual growth. So these people have got lot of obstacles in their spiritual growth. So in that category comes Swami Advaita Ananda. Earlier he was called Gopal Chandra Ghosh. He belonged to a Vaishya community, Sat Gopa, as they call him. In Bengal, so his father was Sri Govardhan Ghosh. We don't know much about his mother and other family members, except he was childless and he had his wife. So he came to Sri Ram. First, he met Sri Ram Krishna in Veni Gopal's house, where Brahma Samaj's annual festival was being celebrated. This Gopal Chandra Ghosh was born in 1828. The date and month, etc., are not known. And as I said, 1928 was his birth year. That means he was eight years senior to Sri Ram Krishna. He was his guru, and he was born in a village called Jagaddal, in the 24 Parana district of the present West Bengal. so he worked we do not know much about his young age and boyhood so when he grew up to say 16 or 15 years he started working as an assistant or a servant in a general shop of brush footwork etc so he was working working and then he was almost 48 years at the time when he first met sri ram krishna in veni gopal's garden house just he was one among the audience who were perhaps some hundreds so he just looked at sri ram krishna was not very much impressed maybe a saintly man he thought and went away then second time when he went there was a purpose he had lost his wife after another 8 years So in eighteen in eighteen seventy five seventy five, so he lost his wife, and then he came to Sri Ram Krishna for succor. He did not come; his one of his friends, one Kaviraj, 
तो ही ब्रॉट हिम टू श्री राम कृष्ण महेंद्र कविराज बट एट द फर्स्ट मीटिंग इट वॉज सेकेंड मीटिंग सो टू से फर्स्ट वॉज एट मेनी गोपाल हाउस दिस वॉज सेकेंड वॉज एट दक्षिणेश्वर वेर श्री राम कृष्ण वॉज स्टे सो दिस वॉज सेकेंड विजिट ही कुड नॉट स्पीक मच वॉट लिटल कॉन्वर्जेशन ही कुड हैव डिड नॉट इम्प्रेस इम मच एक्सेप्ट दैट श्री राम कृष्ण वॉज ए सेंटली पर्सन सो ही वेंट अवे एंड ही वॉज बींग अप्रेस्ड व वोर कम विद ग्रीफ ऑफ हिज वाइफ ऑन वन साइड वॉज द ग्रीफ ऑफ हिज वाइफ सेकेंड वॉज इज एज वॉज फोर्टी सेवन इयर ओल्ड इयर ओज एट एट दैट टाइम एंड सो इन दैट स्टेट ऑफ माइंड ही कुड नॉट गेट इम्प्रेस्ड विथ द डिविनिटी ऑफ श्री राम कृष्ण बट हिज फ्रेंड वॉज इज वेरी गुड फ्रेंड यू सेड यू सी यू के नॉट मेजर अ मैन और गेस वॉट ए पर्सन इज वे जस्ट वन विजिट कम आर लेट एस गो फॉर द सेकेंड विजिट सो ही गोल्ड इम टू मीट श्री राम कृष्ण फॉर द सेकेंड विजिट वेन ही केम दैट मीन्स थर्ड विजिट टू श्री राम कृष्ण देन ही फोन ए ट्रिमेंडस चेंज इन हिम ही गॉट सो मच ऑफ सकर एंड पीस ही फोन दैट इज ऑल इज द ग्रीवमेंट एंड ग्रीफ हैज लेफ्ट हिम He said, "What is this? It's like a miracle. How could it happen? This person must be a very great person." Thus, he, Sri Ram Krishna, revealed himself to him on the third visit. Then he started going to Sri Ram Krishna often. One day, Budo Gopal. Budo means elderly. Gopal, because he was elderly, to Sri Ram Krishna himself. All youngsters like Narayan, Rakhal, etc. They used to call him Budo Gopal. Sri Ram Krishna himself used to call him Budo Gopal, old Gopal, or a old man Gopal. So this Budo Gopal, he started visiting Sri Ram Krishna. One day, he saw Sri Ram Krishna talking to Latu, Latu, who then later on became Swami of Buddha Nanda. so he was the uh, being talked to by sri ram krishna sri ram krishna was telling no latu you want to know about me how can i tell you so he called gop budo gopal who was nearby he asked gop budo gopal you see this latu asked me to tell him about tell her tell about me to him can it be said like that about me Can I tell tell him? Up, tell him. Then Budo Gopal did not understand the situation. Sri Ram Krishna was uh, poking at him for a particular purpose. That was, it is difficult to understand a great man, especially in incarnation. So that was the point he was going to impress on Budo Gopal. So he asked Budo Gopal, "You see, this Latu has come the other day, and he wants to know about me." Can I tell him? Tell him about me. Then Buddha Gopal said, "Sir, we come come to you only to know about you, about your greatness, and be helped by you if possible." Then Sri Ram Krishna said, "No, no, not this time. It will take some time. That is very correct, because one has to be trained. Simply going and hearing a person is of no use." If your mind is not ready to understand that person, suppose you go and sit in the class of Dr. Einstein, lecturing on physics or mathematics, will you be benefited by it? It's good. You have you got a great man's lecture. There is no doubt about it, and your intention also is very good. But will there be any benefit from that? Nothing. So one has to train. One has to train oneself to, before we go. To listen to somebody else, that was what Sri Ram Krishna was impressing. Not now. You come here a few more times, then your mind will be prepared, attuned to receive the teachings that I will I tell. So that is how he remarked on the first day. Then afterwards, one day, Guru Gopal the 
prayed to Sri Ramakrishna alone. He was alone in the Panchavati. Guru Gopalda went there and then he kneeled before him and asked Sri Ramakrishna for spiritual instruction. Sri Ramakrishna must have given him some spiritual instruction and from that day onwards he would go to Radha Kanta's temple. Sri Ramakrishna used to call it Vishnu, Vishnu's temple. So he would go daily to Vishnu's temple and do Kirtan there. Kirtan is singing the name of Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. So going on singing for hours together. So this is called Kirtan. Very common in all the Vishnu temples. They go Vaishnava temples in, the, in Bengal. And wherever the Bengali Vaishnavas are there, this Kirtan is very common. So every day, whenever he was, used to be in Dakshineshwar, then Buddha Gopal used to sing Kirtan in the Vishnu temple. One day, Sri Ram Krishna was talking and then he, he wanted to, he, he heard Gopal, Buddha Gopal Maharaj wanted to go on a pilgrimage. Then Sri Ram Krishna said, just now you have come here, started coming here, so you want to go on a long pilgrimage. As long as you think that God is there, God is there, that means far away. So, you are, you are in ignorance. You don't know how to approach God. When you feel that God is here, God is here, that means inside your heart, then your ignorance is slowly going. What do we do when we come to the saintly people? We learn from them how to pray to God in our own hearts. All the saintly people teach you that God is in your heart. Close your eyes and then think about God. Do utter His name, do Japa and sing to His glories. Sing His glories and sing His bhajans. All these things to, to whom? You are sitting in your room, in your own heart, God is there. So we turn the mind to inside ourselves. God is inside us. So Sri Ramakrishna told him, when you say God is there, in Vrindavan or in Haridwar or in Himalayas, you have not known where God is. But when you say that He is in your heart, perfectly you are correct. It is, that is the real place where you have to search. Even if you go to Vrindavan, we may go to Vrindavan, there is nothing wrong about it. Even in Vrindavan, where will you pray? Not in the outside temple, but in your heart. So it is our heart that is the real temple to which we come after going around all the other outside temples. So he advised Advaitananda, the at that time it's called Gopal, Buddha Gopal. So he advised Gopal as so as long as you say God is there, you are in ignorance. As soon as when you say he is near, then your ignorance is going. It also must have meant that I am here before you, the God you are searching, I am before you, you have not yet known. Without knowing the God is in front of you, you are wandering about in search of you. So that was also perhaps a meaning Sri Ramakrishna wanted to impress upon him. Then one day, senior Gopal, he brought twelve ochre color cloths and twelve japa malas. So he asked, he, he told Sri Ramakrishna, Sir, I want to distribute this one to good saintly people, sadhus. Then Sri Ramakrishna said, Where will you get better saintly people, sadhus, than these youngsters who come here, Narayan, Rakal, Premananda, and all these people? Give them. So, all the twelve cloths and twelve japamalas, Sri Ramakrishna himself took away and then he distributed eleven to these young sannyasi, would-be sannyasins. And one 
of them, eleven, was Gopal himself. So to Gopal himself, one gave what he gave. Twelfth one, he reserved it for Girish Chandra Ghosh. Girish Chandra Ghosh was not there at that time, so he reserved it for him. That was how the twelve cross brought by Gopal Da was the beginning of the sannyasin order of the Ramakrishna mission. Sri Ramakrishna himself thus started the mission with the twelve Gherva cloths offered by Guru Gopal Maharaj. Then, later on, we know Sri Ramakrishna became ill with the cancer in his throat. So, 1886, he was suffering very much in the Kasipur garden. So, the disciples had to serve him by turns. And Guru Gopal's duty was to wash the throat of Sri Ramakrishna. He was suffering from cancer. A lot of pus and blood used to come every few minutes. So he had to clean, wash. So he would put neem water. At that time, that was perhaps the cure. So neem water, Sri Ramakrishna used to gargle perhaps, or Bodhagopalda himself used to pour it into his mouth and ask him to spit out. So every now and then he was washing. One day, Sri Ramakrishna said, Oh, it is paining me very much. Then Guru Gopalda felt very much. So then in that case, don't gargle now. So let us stop here. Then he said, No, no, no. You go ahead. And then he became perfectly calm. Then Guru Gopalda sees that there is no pain at all. He is gargling powerfully and throwing out the pus and the blood. So he was wondering, what a great person. Just he said, you go on, and then he has withdrawn his mind from his throat, and he is the all pain is under his control. So that is how he started knowing the greatness of Sri Ramakrishna, one after another. Then one Sri Ramakrishna one day asked Bodhagopal to bring some lemons. He told him, "Bring, bring me three lemons for me." Puru Gopal went and then found perhaps in a shop or in a garden number of good lemons. So he said, Swam, go, Sri Ramakrishna has asked for three. Let me carry a few more. He may need it afterwards. So he brought much more than number three. So when he brought so many, Sri Ramakrishna asked him, how many I, I wanted you to bring? Then Puru Gopal said, you wanted three from me. Then only give three here, go and return the whole thing from where you brought. Then Guru Gopal Maharaj understood the truthfulness being followed by Sri Ramakrishna. He was truthful to the letter. So no question of transgressing what he has said. He asked for three, he would accept only three, not one more or one less. So, Buddha Gopal went on learning this one from the precepts and practice of Sri Ramakrishna. Then, in, on December 25, 85, in Kasipur Garden, Gopal Da received his initiation from Sri Ramakrishna. Along with him, Niranjananda was also initiated, and I think perhaps one or two householders were also given mantra by Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna himself. Then, Puru Gopalda one day in Kachipur garden, Sri Ramakrishna used to stay on the first floor, on the ground floor. All the younger disciples of him would be sannyasins, so they were all doing spiritual practices. So one day, Narendranath sat for meditation, and went into Samadhi. We read in the life of Swami Vivekananda that he went into Nirvikal Samadhi. Nirvikal Samadhi, whole bodily action will stop, including the heart, breath, heart, everything he stopped. He looks like exactly a dead person. So when he saw him in Samadhi, so he was simply 
He was simply taken aback. What to be done? He ran upstairs where Sri Ramakrishna was lying down in his bed. Sir, Narayan is dead. <laughs> so Sri Ramakrishna, he is the indweller of everyone. So he knew what has happened to Narayan. So he said, don't worry, Narayan is not dead. He is in Samadhi. He has pestered me for that one for a long time. Today he is experiencing that. Don't worry, leave him to himself. And we, we know that after some time, Narendranath came down from the Samadhi and said, where are my limbs? Where, are, where is my body? It was exactly Narendranath's experience in this virtual Samadhi for the first time. So, we, after this incident, Sri Ramakrishna on August 16, 1886, passes away. So, after he passes away, most of his disciples, especially the young people, so they formed themselves into what we call as the Ramakrishna Mutt. And these young people who all became the members of the Mutt under the leadership of Swami Vivekananda, they all assumed the sannyas in garb as well as sannyas in names. Like that, Guru Gopal also got the name Swami Advaita Ananda. So he became Advaita Ananda in the, in the Baranagar Mat. After Sri Ramakrishna passed away, these youngsters had to vacate the Kasipur garden house. They started the first monastery of the Ramakrishna Mat and Mission. So that was at Varahanagara. It should be pronounced like that. But in colloquially they say Varanagar. Varanagar means Varahanagara. There, in a dilapidated, haunted house, the mutt has been charted. And then all the youngsters, of course, Buddha Gopalda was the oldest among them. So he also joined the mission. They mutt and he used to do his own duties there. And Sri Ram Swami Vivekananda was the leader, so he had a routine for all the Swamis to follow. One of the items of routine was everybody must study Sanskrit. So everybody who said, all the others were youngsters, they were all college students, maybe 19, maybe 18, maybe even less. So it is quite natural for them. So they could take very seriously and started reading the Sanskrit grammar with the help of the teacher or by themselves also. But Guru Gopalda, he said, it is a rule by Narendra not for the, all the members. He was 70 years old at that time. He said, then I have to follow that one also. So he also started reading Sanskrit grammar at 70th year only to obey the leader. That is the central point of all the direct disciples. They obeyed Sri Ramakrishna as their master. Every word they used to take seriously and obey and follow. Afterwards, Sri Ramakrishna said, Narendra will be your leader. All of them, whether they were senior in age or junior, they all obeyed Sri Swami Vivekananda. Obedience. So, to obey Swami Vivekananda, he started studying Sanskrit at the age of 70. After he had adorned the Gerua robe, the saffron robe, that is the greatness of all these great Swamis. Then afterwards, if they started staying next to Varanagar, after 78 years there, they shifted over to another place called Alam Bazar. Then from Alam Bazar, they shifted over to the present day Belur Mat. Nearby, there was a Nilambar Babu garden house. The Belur Mat land had been purchased, but buildings had to be erected, warm swatted quarters had to be erected. Then only Sadhus can go. Until then, they stayed in this Nilambar Babu's garden house. Today we call it as the old mutt of Ramkita. 
రామకృష్ణ ఓల్డ్ రామకృష్ణ మట్ పురాణ మట్ సో ఇట్ ఈస్ దేర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అండర్ ఎవర్ కంట్రోల్ నవ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో ఆన్ ది బ్యాంక్స్ ఆఫ్ గ్యాంజీస్ దెన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ది ఫస్ట్ మట్ ది బ్రహ్మ ఆన్ ది అదర్ సైడ్ ఆఫ్ గంగా శ్రీరామకృష్ణ వాజ్ ఆన్ వన్ సైడ్ ఆఫ్ ది ఈస్టర్న్ సైడ్ ఆఫ్ గంగా నవ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఆన్ ది వెస్టర్న్ సైడ్ ఆఫ్ గంగా సో హియర్ ఆల్ ద monastic members of sri ram krishna they stayed there and bodo gopal da was also there staying there the newly purchased ground he used to go and level that lot of unevenness was there before construction can be started hard work had to be done so morning till evening lots of laborers started working you know it is easier to work for yourself than get the work done by others that is the matter that is the truth so bodo gopal da knew this laborer laborers will not work if he leaves the place at for any many length of living like the time so he would be staying there seeing the best work done and to the maximum period and for that case for that uh, sake he would carry his food this little leela bar babu garden was hardly one half a kilometer from the main ground or maybe three fourths of a kilometer but to come and then go three fourths of a kilometer after taking food it would take at least uh, uh, 45 minutes one hour then during that one hour these people will not work so some 50 people not working for one hour means you would lose 50 hours of labor so to save time save labor so he used to stay on the ground itself carrying his food from that near ashram take his food there itself and make the people work so he was considered a very hard task master so all the tribal people that were working there they were called santhals even though the santhal community is there so santhals were working they were very afraid of this budo baba budo baba is very strong so oh, we have to work hard otherwise you will not you will not award reward us with what little we are getting favors we are getting from him so they were very much afraid of him what day swami vivekananda went and then vivekananda wanted to know the miseries of these people vivekananda was him was a unique person he was one with the laborers He was one with the princess also. His heart was so big, so accommodative, so open. So he would, he feel, would feel very happy in the company of these laborers. He went and started speaking to the laborers. They started telling about their miseries, how they were working hard for getting only two meals a day. Many times they don't even get two meals a day. So they are living a life, life like that. So Swamiji was about to shed tears because of their miserable life. So when he spent a few minutes with them, immediately those uh, Santa laborers, they started telling, No Baba, when we say start telling, you shed tears and then tears of pity. We don't want you to feel like that. We don't want to hurt you like that. Secondly, Buddha Baba will come and will be angry with us that we are wasting time with you. Please go away. <laughs> Then Swamiji smiled at them. Don't worry, Buddha Baba, when I am here, he will not tell you anything. Afterwards also he will not take you to task. Then he spoke to them in his own way. So Buddha Baba was a very hard task master. So what for? All as service to Sri Ramakrishna. His only idea was that he should serve Sri Ramakrishna to the best of his ability. It was construction work, he put his whole mind into it. Then, after the level, the road, the land was level, then it was put to use by growing vegetables, flowers, etc. And that they used to be used for the monastery, for puja in the temple and for the food of the sadhus. So the vegetable garden was on one side, the flower garden was on the other side. Naturally vegetable garden has been away 
harder place and the softer place will be taken over by the flowers because flowers want a soft ground so a few brahmacharis are working in the flower garden and a few brahmacharis under the guidance of buddha baba are working in the vegetable garden so buddha gopalda is just cutting jokes and inviting the brahmacharis working in the flower garden oh brahmacharis why are you working so hard on that ground flower garden is a very difficult place you come here to the vegetable garden this is a very soft place you will not have to take so much trouble the river the fact was the rivers but he used to cut jokes with them like that and have fun so in his old age also at this youngness these people are young in mind always it is not the physical old age their mind was so young even in their old body he had he would not take any tea tea total reverse but his the aversion to the tea did not uh, interfere with anybody's but he would make cut jokes even at uh, with this matter so other brahmacharis like uh, subodhananda ji subodhananda subodh so this young swami who later on became swami subodhananda he was very fond of tea so he would be taking tea maybe twice or thrice in a day so whenever advaita and jeeva used to notice it hey don't take tea it is a very hot stuff it will make it may injure you then subodhan ji was very much addicted to it for two or three times a cup of tea, cup of tea he used to return and reply he would say no sir no swami this every drop of tea produces one drop of blood it is very good for building up good blood is it so then take more take take more gopal das started in kriti so this is how gopal das was very happy with everybody and do do a duty and create others also to do their duties so like that he spent his whole time in the mat and were very speak and span he had a small room and in which only a few things maybe he had a dozen a couple of clothes which he would wear every day and a common bowl of water and a mat on which he would sleep that was all the furniture in his room so simple he was and always hard working he would he could play tabla well so he would tabla even in his earlier days before joining he might have learnt it he could play tabla very well so he would play tabla with naren and others by singing in the shrine then he would go daily regularly to the temple take bath in the ganga cold calcutta cold is quite cold so in that cold season also you take ganga bath and it was very regular in his practice so one day he had a vision of bhagwan sri ram krishna so what how was that vision sri ram krishna was there like sri ram krishna but in his hand he was having a gada mesh so he had a mesh in his hand then guru gopal da he said sir what is this mesh in your hand we never saw a mesh in your hand when you were alive no this time i am the gadadhara from gaya so this mesh is part and parcel of my appearance so that is why i am holding this mesh now so he had the sri ram krishna's vision as the gadadhara of gaya we know so many other devotees including the monastic disciples they all had different visions of sri ram krishna swami turiyananda swami turiyananda saw sri ram krishna in jagannath puri jagannath at jagannath himself he used to say sri ram krishna in jagannath himself i saw him so so 
श्री राम कृष्ण एज पेर एज रामा श्री राम कृष्ण एज पेर कृष्ण श्री राम कृष्ण एज पेर काली श्री राम कृष्ण एज पेर एज जगन्नाथ टू हिम ही एज पेर एज गदाधर विष्णु अब गया सो ही श्री राम कृष्ण रिवील सिम सेल्फ एंड आफ्टर वर्ड शी डिड नॉट लिव लिव वेरी लॉन्ग सो ही एड सम स्टमक पेन सो इट इट वॉज गिविंग यू लॉट ऑफ ट्रेबल सम ऑफ वॉज बेरिंग इट वन डे इट बिकेम वेरी वेरी एक्यूट ही कुड नॉट बेर ही वेट टू द टेम्पल डायरेक्टली एंड देन कंप्लेन टू श्री राम कृष्ण दिस ट्रेबल हैज बिकम वेरी मच आई कैन नॉट बेर प्लीज रिलीज मी फ्रॉम दिस बॉडी प्लीज रिलीव मी फ्रॉम दिस ट्रेबल बाई रिलीजिंग मी फ्रॉम दिस बॉडी सो ही प्रेड टू श्री राम कृष्ण सिंसियरली देन ही डिड नॉट लिव फॉर मेनी डेज दिस ट्रेबल इंक्रीज्ड एंड ऑन द ट्वेंटी एथ डिसम्बर नाइनटीन हंड्रेड नाइन वेन गोपाल दॉज इन इज एटी फर्स्ट इयर सो ही एट स्लाइट फीवर अदरवाइज जनरल हेल्थ वॉज वेरी गुड देन द डॉक्टर केम सो ही स्पोक टू द डॉक्टर वेरी स्माइलिंगली डॉक्टर्स नेम वॉज मति बाबू सो मति बाबू सो ही स्पोक टू एम वेरी स्माइलिंगली एंड देन ड्रैंक अ लिटिल लेमन वाटर आफ्टर वर्ड ही टूक अ लिटिल मिल्क एंड ले हिम सेल्फ डाउन नो मोर टू राइस पास सो लेट के वेरी लेट इन इज लाइफ टू श्री राम कृष्ण श्री राम कृष्ण वॉन्टेड टू प्रूव टू द वर्ल्ड that when incarnations come their compassion is so much they never look for any body as incompatible or uh, as not uh, uh, not possible to be initiated into spiritual life the incarnations are capable of initiating anybody into spiritual life at any age with any obstacles and take them to the highest level Guru Gopal Maharaj was called a knower of God. He is worshipped today. We are celebrating his birthday, and he had visions of Sri Ram Krishna after his passing away also. So, such a great spiritual person was produced by the spiritual power of the incarnation of this age, by Om Sri Ram Krishna. So, he said. whatever may be the age if then somebody comes to me i will take them to the highest and he proves it and other obstacles you see he had not much spiritual education earlier nobody had given him any instruction to put spiritual life earlier and he comes to the spiritual teacher when he is 40 years old see even then he is able to rise to the highest and become a great saint So Sri Ram Krishna's promise to humanity is this: Don't hesitate to take to spiritual life at any time in your life. No age is bar for following spiritual life. No condi- condition in life, whether you are a married person or unmarried person, whether you are a widow, widow here, doesn't matter. Whatever condition you are, take to spiritual life. It's possible. Only have a good guru. If the guru is good, with his guidance, you can certainly climb to the highest level. So this is the lesson Sri Ram Krishna teaches us that he can, if anybody takes refuge under him and wants to follow his path, he is there to guide you under all circumstances, men, women, and other people with all other obstacles in spiritual life, any. caste or any creed you, you may belong to spiritual life is open to you under the guidance of sri ram krishna his compassion is so much he is ready to help you and that's what he shows through so many incidents in his life in the in the life of bodo gopal maharaj swami advaita ananda we see sri ram krishna's manifestation of this compassion and all power all power powerfulness of the spirituality of the incarnation there is no limit to the spirituality 
spiritual life means if, if a person becomes a guru, he has to take on all the sins of the disciple. That is how he purifies the disciple. Purify the student, disciple is able to rise to a higher level without much effort. Because all his sins are taken away by the incarnation and he suffers for them. So this work Sri Ramakrishna did to several people. Another one great case of a sinner being made into a saint is the case of Girish Chandra Ghosh, one of the worst sinners of that time. He just lifted him up. He became one of the great saintly persons. So Sri Ramakrishna's glory is revealed through all these direct disciples. We are fortunate today that we are able to reminisce some of the incidents in the life of Swami Advaita Anandaji and we realize the teaching of Sri Ramakrishna that all of you are welcome to take to spiritual life under whatever condition you are, you are eligible. So that is Sri Ramakrishna's promise to us. May we listen to his promise, may we turn to him, may we take refuge under him, may his compassion and grace flow upon us and lift us up to the spiritual enlightenment. Jai Ram Krishna Niranjanam Nityam Anantarupam Bhaktanukam Padrita Vigraham Vai Ishavataram Parameshem Idyam Tam Ramakrishnam Shirasana Bhavam